Hello everyone and welcome to my antique channel. My name is Deanna and I'm the owner of Vintage Touch Antiques. Well, my husband and I went on a two-day outdoor event where we bought a number of things that I am going to be really happy to show you. I will have to apologize before I begin that I am going to be walking in and out of camera here in order to show you all of this. But before I begin, I'd like to tell those who are new to my channel that I sell 19th century and 20th century antiques from a double space antique booth that's located in Antique Crossroads, Hagerstown, Maryland. I also sell vintage and antique pieces in an online store and the link to that store will be below in the description. So, without any further ado, I'm going to start with the textiles that I found on this trip. And again, nothing has been processed, so keep that in mind. They will be laundered and, you know, ironed and spruced up, so they will look much better. But this is what I found, and I did pay around $370 total for this two-day shopping extravaganza. So I'm going to begin with these early, long, prairie-type aprons. Um, there's two of them here, one in the front and one in the back. Now these long aprons are getting really, really hard to find, and so when I can find them, I'm just always delighted. Again, they will be ironed and laundered and fixed up, but that was a good find. The next thing was a very long Victorian ladies petticoat. This one has the big wide ruffle at the bottom, if you can see that. Again, very full this one is, as you can see here as I'm holding it up. And again, it will be laundered and it will look much better. I also found some damask, damask pieces. This is a towel, kitchen towel. Now this one does not have the fringe that like a most, like many of them have, I shouldn't say most. Um, this is a different uh, kind of a damask towel, but you can see there the, the uh, weave that's in the damask. And that is red and white. And then the other damask, well another damask piece that I found was this red and white, it's a large rectangle tablecloth. And this is just a wonderful piece. It has, it does have some fringe around all four edges. And I'm really happy to get that. These are hard to come by. And I'm not gonna try to open that one up, of course. Also, I found a lot of damask, actually. Two um, beautiful white, 19th century damask towels with the braided fringe on this one. You can see the beautiful um, pattern there in the weave. And this one on the other side, let me get it up here. It's a little different, the weave and the braided part, as you can see, the weave on this one. Well, let me see, I've got the wrong one here. Here it is that one. It's a little longer, this one is. Beautiful, beautiful white towels. They make great show towels. Now, I also found these damask, probably started out as napkins, but they're gorgeous. Um, they've got such a sheen to them because that they look like they're unused. And I use these often as a little table, center tablecloths, where you put a vignette or a table centerpiece on top of it. So there's three of those. And then this textile piece, which is a nice oval, and this is a Quaker lace tablecloth. You see the beautiful, and I love this cotton lace tablecloths because they don't wrinkle. They just go out of the drawer right on your table and look so beautiful. And then I also found 
another one of these oval little looped mats. I sell a lot of these and I'm really happy to find these when I can get them. They sell quickly. This is an unusual color of a braided, round braided mat. These are so popular in primitive settings and this one has, you can see, the very tight braid there. It's in a maroon or a, a wine color with a sage green and that would also go well with primitives. Now this piece I've got standing here on this little chair. I found the chair and him as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show him right now before I get on to my other things. I've got him in a standing position right now. He's a, from probably the 1920s. He's an early Shuko, straw stuffed, completely straw stuffed, monkey, jointed, with his cute little glass eyes, his bellhop suit. Now these are yes-no monkeys is what they're called. He does sit and he stands, like I said, if, if you position him just right. And you can see he, he has a lever back here that becomes his tail so that he can turn his head. And so he is just a charming piece, about 15 inches tall. Just really thrilled to get him. And then this adorable child's chair that I had him on. This is like a spindle back Windsor. I love children's chairs and you can see the early red wash paint that's on it or finish. Just delighted with these little cute chairs. I saw one recently that was quite similar to this actually. And so um, now I'm going to have to change the camera angle to finish this video, so bear with me. Okay, and now for the next part of this uh, segment. I have my camera angled down towards the table here where I've got all these things laid out. So let me just begin by pointing out that I have, I bought quite a few old boxes that are behind me here. There were nine total. One of these is a little chest type box, very, very primitive. Another one is held dies and they have, it has an advertising label there on the lid. If you can get a glance at that and other boxes which are like a drawer cheese box one painted green and again this early primitive one here it's like a chest type so i'm not going to do any more with the boxes okay i found this great antique knife box or carrier some call it great turned handle there Beautiful construction. Just a great old primitive piece. I'm going to do the wooden pieces first. This is a nice, you can see the outer brownness there around this old wood bowl. This is a tree bowl. Just a real classic as far as primitive pieces. And this one's a ten and a half inch bowl. I've sold a couple of these just recently, but this is a nice thick, as you can see, it looks like at least one inch there. Um, this is a crock cover, all wood. They would lay these on top of crocks for, for instance, like sauerkraut and things that had to um, ferment and also just to cover the things that were in the crocks. So there, that piece. Another butter print. This is a double star print. Nice old train piece. Then I got this darling little child size sock stretcher. They would put the socks on these stretchers, these high top socks, so they would stretch because they were mostly wool so you had to stretch them in order to keep their shape and then these holes some of them have them and some don't but these were 
to facilitate the drying of the sock when they were washed. I'm gonna try and start this in and I'll be in and out of the screen here. This is a pot scrubber. Can you imagine? Of course, they had these great iron pots and skillets and they use these wire ring <laughs> things to actually scrape those pots and get them clean. I have some great little children's pieces here. These are enamel where this one's a little greater and these are little child size toy size pots. These are blue enamel pots. One has a white interior. Just great little early pieces. And a tiny little pewter cup that has a pedestal. Love this piece. I love old pewter. Look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? And I found some German. These are all marked Germany. I hope it's picking that up. The mark on the bottom. These are animals that are composition animals. I've got three of them are cows in a reclining position. And then one donkey. Again, all marked Germany. And this one single yellowware cup from the 19, I mean the 20th century. It's a pottery piece, but it is yellowware. Of course, those of you who are familiar with my channel know that I love ironstone and I sell a lot of ironstone and I found these great ironstone bowls. This one has the early mark and so does this other one. This one is a different mark. It's a Meekin. Here's a nice little vintage bait box. It needs cleaned out. My husband will be the cleaner of that one. He cleans up a lot of these things. This one would put go on your belt attached to your belt and then just open up this is a cylinder type green tin and this wonderful straight razor this is a celluloid straight razor with its case the right case Odell's is the name on the razor and the box that it comes in found some this one would also go in my outdoor fishing section. Um, Herder's Fly Line Cleaner. And that's a little advertising tin. And then these little advertising tins. I found two of these, different sizes. These are the little Helps um, throat lozenge pieces. Okay. Here's an unusual little sock darner with the swirl design. And a great Russian tea tin. Has the little dome top, great condition, embossed. Um, hinged lid. And I'm not going to try to pronounce the Russian name that's there on the top. I sell a lot of tinware, and I got this nice tin strainer that has the tube handle, the hanging hole there. And another skimmer. This is the solid type that would skim cream and broth and things. Short-handled one. And this is a great old ladle with the, the turned wood handle there. This may be P 
computer. I'm not sure, but it's it's quite early. Found two more bone handled three time Civil War era forks. A great old well worn shop brush. A lot of people collect these old brushes and hang them and they're just, they make great little displays. I bought this just because I thought, who knows, somebody may at some point need to have an eagle finial. He just has his little bolt there that would screw right into something. He's metal, I'm not sure what kind of metal that is. I don't think it's cast iron. And another little black coin purse with the kiss lock closure satin. Now I found these great little books that I'm going to show you. Here's one that is um, just a tiny little thing and it um, looks like a little devotional book. So you can see there how cute that one is. And then I got these wonderful little marbled Sunday school books. They were put out by um, Sunday school. And they have little children's stories in them. And these all dated from the 1830s, pre-Civil War. I got different colored marbled varieties here, five of them in total. As you can see, just great little early books. And then I got a barn lantern here. This is a Dietz barn lantern with the red globe. Monarch. Dietz, New York, USA on the bottom. And this was a great day for Finding old buckets. Now this one's an old painted, green painted one. The bale handle. Great primitives. A couple of berry pails. These are the kind that have the little fold out handles. Hope you can see this. I'm, look at one here. And they fold back like this. And they come out like that to hold them. And there's two of those with their lids. And then these great little gray granite pails with the bale handles. This is a tiny one here. And this one, if I can get the bale up here, is a little bit larger. It has a few dings in the bottom. But that's, again, expected out of old granite wear. But nice old primitive pieces. And then one last little berry pail, not quite as old, but it is all tin with its lid. It's got some more shine to it. Now this all, this kind of tin oxidizes and becomes gray like, like this one. This one would have started out looking like this, but that's what age does to tin. Then I got a rug beater. Now, I don't know how to show it to you except to show you the angled handle there and then the um, design of the wire the old rug beater now this piece I just love it is from starts out to be 1832 and I do hope to reframe this in an early frame um, it's a birth record is what it is, but if you can see the beautiful script, I love the script from the 19th century. And that one is just gorgeous. And then finally, I got these two. They're railroad houses, all wood, and they look like they might have been home constructed, probably from the 1930s. There's two of them. The wires have been cut here. They did um, apparently attach to something that was electrical. 
but they would just make great little pieces for a Christmas village or whatever. And so that concludes what I found on this trip and I thank you for watching and I would like to again direct your attention to the description of the video where you will find um, links to my webpage as well as my online store and other social media sites and also invite you to visit me at Antique Crossroads, Hagerstown, Maryland, in my double space, space booth that's on the left side of that mall, just third row, look for the large sign that hangs in the back. And finally, invite you to subscribe and share and thumbs up and all of that, because I'd love to have you. And before I close, remind you to enjoy collecting your antiques and learn about them, because when you own an antique, you own a piece of history. So bye-bye till next time.